Welcome back to another video on my channel and this is a special video because what I'm going to do I've never done before. What I want to do in this video is providing 35 tips and tricks for the Nikon C9 functions you might not have seen or you might have seen and not paid attention to them. And I will also make sure that there is not a lot of overlap to another video on my channel which I recommend you watching because in the other video I also talk about how to customize the function for your optimal workflow. Let's get started. What I will do in the next few minutes is walking through the menu of the Nikon C9 and showing you different features and functions which are not super obvious. And I will also make sure I don't take too much time for it because otherwise the video will become way off too long. Tip number one is about raw recording of your images. If you go into that menu here, there is no longer an option like we had it for instance on other C cameras like the C7 Mark II to store raw images without compression at all. You have lossless compression, high efficiency star and high efficiency. And the good thing is that all three versions store images in 14 bit and the full resolution, but you save about one third of storage space if you go to high efficiency star and high efficiency compared to lossless compression reduces the file size by approximately 50%. And when I looked into that, I do not really see a significant difference between lossless compression and high efficiency star. And if space matters for you on your hard disks, then you can safely go for high efficiency star. Image quality will be good enough and you still have a lot of space on your storage. Tip number two concerns picture control. And I do not use that feature very often, but for many people it will be super interesting and exciting. If you go into that, you have here the usual suspects, auto standard, neutral, vivid, monochrome, portrait, landscape, and so on. But you also have creative picture controls. And even more exciting, you can set up your own picture control with your own parametrization. And that's what I've done here as an example. So I have here one picture control math photographer entry. And if I go into that, I can now tweak all my parameters and it works like a charm. You get then pre-programmed some steps which you can save in terms of time in your workflow in post-processing and some people will appreciate that. I tested it, it works well. I will not use it because really I'm a pure raw post-processing guy, but for many people that might be an interesting feature. Tip number three concerns metering methods. And if I go into that menu entry, I have the usual three matrix metering, which is multi-field, basically center weighted and spot. But there is also highlight weighted metering, which also found its way into Leica cameras not too long ago. And this will then optimize the light metering of the whole scene with respect to these highlights. And uh, I can quickly illustrate how this looks like. Let's go into matrix first. Let's take a shot from that scene in front of me. Here is the image. Let's go back into the menu. Let's do this again for highlight weighted metering and you will see how different the image turns out to be. So here this is highlight weighted metering and you see how nicely sharp, crisp, but most importantly accurately with respect to colors, the highlights are presented in that image compared to the multi-field metering. And by the way, here of course, I have the rest of the image underexposed. So in other words, this is in other parts of the scene where we don't have highlights, exposure to the left, but that is very easy to correct in post-processing given the high dynamic range we have of that Nikon C9 sensor here. That's a very good feature. I recommend to use it and it is almost impossible if you have overblown highlights. That's still not the case in this scene here to recover information out of highlights in particular if clipping kicks in and then you lose everything and you can no longer correct it in post. Then it's much better to go for exposure to the left and pay attention and optimize the scene in terms of metering with respect to the highlights in front of you. Tip number four concerns a warning when it comes to image area and that's a very useful feature. If you go into here, I can choose if I go for full frame or if I go for instance for the DX format which crops into the sensor and you lose basically the advantage of a full frame sensor. And I'm always super nervous and check whether I'm still in FX and not accidentally have set it to DX. 
that can be avoided from now on because here is a field which you can toggle on and off that's called DX crop alert and that is super useful. So right now, if I would go here to the DX format, let's do this quickly. I have my usual live view and here in the upper right hand side corner, I see a little symbol saying DX. So I'm in the DX format, but that doesn't catch my attention. If I go now and toggle this on here and say DX crop alert on and I go back then actually it's flashing here and you see this flashing and that is eye catching and then I'm aware, pay attention, something is going wrong, you're accidentally in the DX format and not in the FX format. I really appreciate that feature. I think it's good to have it and clearly if you go then back to FX, the flashing will stop and you don't become nervous by looking at that. Tip number five concerns white balance and very often people change white balance only in post, but you have on the Nikon C9 the option to do this directly in camera. And you have here the usual entries, auto, natural light, sunlight, cloudy shade, and so on. But all the way down here, you have preset manual, and this would deserve actually an own video to explain it in detail. But what you can do is you can set up here your own preset for white balance. You can also protect it. If I go, for instance, here to fine tune, I can start to tweak my white balance and uh, I can use it later on for my shooting and directly see the result in live view. And that's a very nice feature. I recommend looking into it. I like it. It's good that it is available on the C9. Tip number six is manual focus ring in autofocus mode. So I'm now here in the menu for fine tuning the settings and you can toggle this on and off. You should have it off if you accidentally tend to get in touch with your focus ring and then your autofocus is ruined. But you should have it on if you want to overrule your autofocus from time to time. And that's something you can do here. So here I focus on the Leica camera in front of me, but I can also use now the focus ring to change my focus and overrule autofocus. One touch on the button brings back the autofocus to where it's supposed to sit. It's a nice feature. Most importantly, you need to know how to control it because some people tend to accidentally touch the focus ring and then focus is basically not where it's supposed to sit. So toggle it on or toggle it off based on your taste and preferences. Number seven also sits under metering and exposure and is easy exposure compensation. Let's switch this off. Let's go back into live view. And now if I wanna apply exposure compensation, I have to push the corresponding button here at the top of the camera, hold it, and then turn the wheel here to actually apply my exposure compensation. You can also make your life easier by going into the menu and of course going back here and saying on. And then you no longer have to push that button here. You can just apply the control wheel and you see now here how exposure compensation is kicking in with that little icon and you no longer have to push that button and hold it while you turn the wheel. Now, of course, this works not in fully manual mode because then the control wheels are all fully occupied. It only works in P mode, in A mode and in S mode. Tip number eight is about the following. You see here around my focus field, a circle. And someone asked me in the comments, how do you get that circle to be visible? And that's actually very easy. You go into the menu and you have here menu entry, center weighted area. And if I go into that, I can basically say average and then if I go back into live view, that circle is gone. So if you don't have that circle, you know now where in the menu you can hex it back on your screen. If I go here into center weighted area again and go to small, I get a small circle indicating to me what the area is, which is taken into account for the weighting here. And if I go back and go to standard, then this area becomes a bit larger. And again, you see it visualized in that circle here in live view, quite nice. Tip number nine is matrix metering face detection. And you can toggle this on and off and I typically have it on. And the reason is hidden here in the help menu. If you go into that, it says the camera adjusts exposure according to the brightness of any human faces it detects. And that's quite nice. So you don't have to pay attention to have the correct exposure where you wanna have it, namely on the face of a human being. Tip number 10 is continuous shooting speed. And on this control wheel here, you set up single shooting or you have low speed continuous shooting or high speed continuous shooting. But you can also tweak how many frames are actually taken if you go for these settings. And that's in continuous shooting speed. So if we go into that menu entry, we can say on continuous high speed, how many frames do we wanna take? 20, 15, 12, or 10. And depending on your taste and workflow, 
you can set this up for your liking. Or on continuous low speed, you can go from 10 frames all the way down to one frame and in this way tweak it to the best setting that works best for you. Tip number 11 is about extended shutter speeds. And normally if you take the camera out of the box and you are in manual mode, you see here my exposure time, I can actually go as long as 30 seconds. Let's quickly check that. So at 30 seconds, bulb and time kicks in. 30 seconds really is the maximum here. But you can change this in the menu if you go to shooting display and extended shutter speeds and toggle it on, then your range extends. And now I can go up all the way as you see here to let's check 900 seconds and then bulb kicks in. And that is quite nice if you're an astrophotographer or go for long exposures, you cannot go further than 30 seconds before you come into bulb if you have not toggled this on here. So keep it on, there is no harm in having it enabled. Tip number 12 is again about image area. And I spoke before how you can get a flashing icon if you accidentally come into the DX crop mode. And here you can also select what image areas can actually be chosen in the menu. So here we can, for instance, deselect DX, one on one and 16 to nine, and then all which is left is FX. Or if you only go for FX or DX, you can limit the selectable image area to these two options. Tip number 13 concerns live view. And there is a menu entry which says view mode, photo live view. If you go into that and you go for show effect of settings, then whatever you set up in the camera in terms of color, white balance, exposure is immediately visible in the preview. But if you have a certain preference at home to actually change in post-processing, for instance, the coloring or the white balance, you can also go for adjust for ease of viewing. And if you go on that, you can go to auto or you can customize it with respect to white balance, picture control and brightening of shadows. For tip number 14, I switched off the light and only kept on the TV in the background. And if I now go into live view, the scene is pretty dark and uh, you can see a little bit because the TV is still on but not too much. And here is a mode which is called starlight view, which is very good for astrophotographers. It artificially increases the brightness of the screen. So you have a better orientation for the scene in front of you. Let's look into the normal view as it comes. And then let's go into starlight view. Let's toggle it on. And now you will see the image in front of you is much brighter and you get better orientation for your focus and your parameter setting. In addition to starlight view on the menu, a big help for people who shoot outside in the dark are also the illuminated buttons of the Nikon C9, which I already showed in my other video. So I can just activate this here and then you get illumination of all essential buttons. Tip number 15 is about warm display colors. And when I saw this first, I thought this might tweak the color temperature of the live view, but it's something completely different and is also related to the starlight view, namely is a big help for astrophotographers and people who shoot in complete darkness. If we go into that, we can here choose off mode two or mode one. And you see how this changes all colors in the live view to a very decent red. So you don't get irritated any longer by the bright live view in front of you. The difference between mode one and mode two is the following. If I go for mode one and then go back into live view, everything is only in red. And by the way, let's try the effect of the starlight view again. Let's see if we see then more. Et voila, now we see the scene. So starlight view really works and uh, mode one colors everything in red here. Let's go back and let's go into mode two. So here we can now, I think, switch this off. Let's go into mode two. And then if we go now into live view, we have the scene in front of us in color and in the real representation of the scene, not everything colored in red, but everything that's in the settings, parameters, all the information I get in the live view on the borders of the display that is still in red. And you can also tweak if I go here to mode one, for instance, still the brightness of the setting, you can go up a little bit or you can go down a little bit, whatever is to your liking. Quite nice and uh, quite thoughtful from Nikon to bring it here for astrophotographers. Tip number 16 is release timing indicator. And that is also a nice feature. So if this is set off here and I take a shot, nothing really happens on the screen. If I switch 
into that menu entry and go into lines appear at all four edges of the screen when a picture is taken. Let's try this out. Now look at the borders of the live view. You saw that lines flashing off. I think that's quite interesting. And then here, let's also try type C. Then it's only on the left and right edges of the screen, but not at the top and the bottom when a picture is taken. So let's check this out. Sorry, I don't think I've chosen it. It's still on B, let's go to C. And now watch the side boundaries and have a look. You saw these lines flashing and that indicates you that the shot is taken. There are four different ways how you can customize this quite nice. Tip number 17 concerns the illumination of the buttons. I should say the most essential buttons and the top side LCD display. And clearly you can do this via the on off switch and instead of pushing the on off switch towards off, you push it in the other direction and then the buttons get illuminated as well as the top side LCD. But you can also use the menu to do this. So let's switch it off again. You go into the menu and then you go into shooting and display and then you have under display somewhere here. Let's go there. LCD illumination on off. And if you toggle this now on, then the buttons will be illuminated all the time as well as the top side LCD. Tip number 18 is about grid type and per se there's nothing spectacular here. You have 3.3 grids, 4.4 and so on. But what is interesting for instance is if you want to go in post processing for a 16 to 9 aspect ratio, you can get already in your live view an indication what part of the image will be in that 16 to 9 section later on in post. And if I choose that, let's just choose it here. Typically, if you take the camera out of the box, still nothing is visible here and that might be disappointing. And what you have to do is to go here on custom monitor shooting display. And then if you go into that and you have, for instance, your first display representation here, you'd go to the right hand side and then you see that grid here is not activated. So I need to activate it. And now the 16 to 9 aspect ratio box will be visible on the screen. And you see it now indicated here, a very fine line here, if you look into it, where your 16 to 9 aspect ratio would end up in post, even if you shoot here at the full size of the sensor. Tip number 19 is setting up the virtual horizon type. And again, if you are in custom monitor shooting display, and then you have a certain screen set up for the virtual horizon, if you don't have that done, you will not see any change if you tweak virtual horizon type. But if you are in here, you have two types to choose from. One is going across the whole scene and the other one is only on the sidelines, namely the right hand side at the bottom. That is quite useful. I think it looks much better. Let's just go into here. Let's toggle here on the display button. Now we have the virtual horizon across the whole scene. Let me quickly change that here now into type B. And then you will see now it's at the borders. So here, for instance, and here, and uh, you don't have a line across the scene and maybe disturbing your image composition. This is quite useful. Let's toggle back to my normal standard view here and you can tweak this in the menu. Tip number 20 is about control lock in the menu. And there is here a button which can be used to lock settings so that you not accidentally turn them. I've set up this button for something else here, namely for picture control. So I get one additional customizable button, but you can lock certain settings in the following way. Let's go into the menu here. Let's say control lock. And now I can choose whether I want to lock my shutter speed or my aperture or my focus point. So let's have a look here right now. The focus point is free to move. You see it's moving around my Leica camera here. And if I go back into control lock and say focus point lock, now the focus point is locked. So if I go back into live view and want to move my focus point, it says focus point selection is locked. And that's what you can do, of course, also for your aperture and for your shutter speed. Tip number 21 is split screen zoom. And that is a very interesting feature, which I have set up here in the eye menu. And I'll show you quickly how it works. So if you go into the menu, and you're going to customize eye menu, then you get all the places for the eye menu here. And I've chosen here split screen display zoom, and that works in the following way. Let me just show this to you because it's a quite ingenious feature. If I go into that, I get the border zoomed and I can also move this around. You see this here in this little representation and see what's magnified. And clearly I can then work with my manual zoom if I have set it up for manual zoom and get an optimized representation 
of different parts of the image in the way I have set this up here. And that's in particular useful if you have a shallow depth of field and you want to control if in certain areas of the image things are still sharp and in focus in the way you want it to have. Quite nice and very convenient to have this in the eye menu set up in the way you can do this in the menu. Tip number 22 concerns playback display options. And when you take the camera out of box and you are in the play menu, then you can toggle here between different screens and there is no information or just a little information. And that is not what I want. I also want to see, for instance, my exposure data. So I can toggle as often as I want. It's the only information I get. And the way to bring this on display is to go to playback display options. And then here you can choose all kinds of different information sets. So I go for instance to exposure info and then I go back into play and then I have basically the image. Then here I have the little information I had before, but now I get basic exposure information. And you can take this to the extreme by choosing a lot of information to be shown here. So you can choose the highlights, the RGB histogram, shooting data. For instance, let's take this one here. Let's go back here into play. And then this play gives me also here all kinds of informations which are quite nice to have. And uh, I didn't find this immediately when I got the camera. Now it's set up, I know where to change it. Hopefully it's also helping you. Tip number 23 makes your life easier if in camera you want to delete pictures. And what typically happens is you wanna get this deleted from both card slots. And that's what you can choose here. But I would recommend to always go for confirmation required. Then you don't accidentally delete images. But if you have it on no, it's a bit tedious because an image you really want will get stuck on one SD card and will be deleted from the primary one. So I would go here for yes, confirmation required. Tip number 24 is monitor color balance. And here you can calibrate your in-camera live view. And that's quite convenient if you go to it, you can here start to play and get the color temperature right in the way you will later have it in post-processing and in this way tweak your preview so that it matches your workflow. Tip number 25 is for the following situation. Many people like me, for instance, like to mount non-Nikon lenses with a different mount on this Nikon C9 camera. And if you want to do that and your adapter has no electronic contacts, no information from your settings on the lens or the parameters of your lens will find its way into metadata. And for this, you have a menu entry here, which is non-CPU lens data. And here you can manually fill in the most essential data you want to later have in your metadata. And that is quite convenient for people who shoot non-Nikon lenses with adapters on that Nikon C9 camera body. Tip number 26, I provided already in my hands-on video of the Nikon C9, but I wanna repeat it here because I think it's important. You have here sensor shield behavior at power off, and you can say the sensor shield closes or it stays open at all times. And I typically have this on closes because when I exchange lenses on the camera body, I'm quite happy that the sensor is protected. So I recommend to keep this at on and then no dust and no particles will get onto your sensor because it's protected by a shield. Tip number 27 is about voice memo options. And you have a button here which you can use to drop a voicemail, a quick verbal comment onto an image to remind you what the scene is, what the parameters are, whatever. And you can tweak the options on these voice memos here. So for instance, you can say, it's only recording a voice memo while you press and hold that button, or you can also toggle it in a mode where you press start and then you start recording and when you press it again, it stops recording and that's quite nice. You can also tweak the audio output playback here. And I think that's a very useful option if you wanna remind yourself in an image what this is all about in the shooting scene. Number 28 is silent mode and you can in camera sounds here tweak all types of noises the camera is doing. And because this is an electronic shutter only here, you can have this very silent in a moment. And then the question of course is, why do you have an additional menu entry which says silent mode and you can toggle this on and off. And the reason is simple. What Nikon is saying is that if you have this on, everything else in the camera is also a bit slowed down, a bit more silent and uh, there will be not so much distraction, for instance, from the noise coming from an autofocus and all of that. It will slow down the camera a little bit, but it will get it almost completely quiet, which might be useful, for instance, in a church and at a wedding. Tip number 29 is about touch controls. And clearly you can use the screen here as a touch screen, but you can also go a bit further. And if I go into touch controls here, 
First of all, I can enable and disable touch controls, so I can toggle this as enabled or playback only or disable it. But there is another feature which I personally find very useful. You can also increase the sensitivity of the touch screen to your touches by toggling glove mode on. And that is quite useful and works like a charm. Like various other cameras, the Nikon C9 has GPS built into the camera body. And in order to enable it, you go here on to location data, built in, that is an indication. And then you can say record location data. You also can program a timer and you can set the clock from satellite in the camera. It's quite useful and it will always help you to find the place where your shooting actually was happening. Tip number 31 is essential if you want to charge and power up the camera on the go, for instance, by a power bank. And in order to do this, you need to have your USB power delivery at on and then it will work and uh, you can actually charge via the USB port your camera. You can also charge while shooting. It works very well and you will never run out of power if you have a fairly strong power pack or battery with you on the go. Tip number 32 is another safeguard I highly recommend in the way I'm going to explain right now. And that's slot empty release lock. You should have this at all times set to release locked. And what it means is if you don't have cards in the card slots, then you cannot release the shot. And that is very important because if you choose the other option, you can take arbitrarily many shots, but nothing will be stored. And when you're at home, you will have no images. So keep it at release locked at all times and then you will be safe. Tip number 33 helps you to protect your rights and interests in your images. And you have copyright information here. I have set this to math photographer. So everyone knows the images come from me. It doesn't prevent you completely from people stealing your photos but it is an additional safeguard you can implement here. And I highly recommend to have something filled in here and have it toggle to on. Tip number 34 applies if you want to mount an external monitor to your camera, like for instance, an Atomos Ninja 5. What you need then to do is to go into HDMI here in the menu and tweak the settings in the way you want to have it. Otherwise it will not work. And that is something people need to pay attention to. I have experienced it often that people just mount an Atomos and then they are disappointed that the result is not what they expected. So here's the menu entry for tweaking whatever you need to have. Tip number 35 and the last one in this series of tips and tricks is airplane mode in the network menu. And I recommend if you don't plan to connect your camera for the day to a smartphone, a tablet or some other device, then switch the camera into airplane mode because it will save power and also, if you are on travel, you don't have to remind yourself to activate the airplane mode if you go onto a plane. This is it. I'm actually quite proud to have managed to go through 35 tips and tricks. I hope there were some data points interesting and helpful for you and you discovered some new features which you were not before aware of. If you liked that video, don't forget to drop me a thumbs up. Stay tuned on my channel. There's always more to come. Stay safe and healthy and of course, peace out.